Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome start to your Friday. It is Friday, so hopefully you guys are feeling well this morning. We're going to talk about the weather specifically for today, your April the 22nd, and really discuss what could potentially happen today. I'm expecting a lot of severe weather for a large portion of the country, but this large portion of the country, it's going to be very isolated in this area that we are expecting at least the potential for some severe weather at the same time, a low pressure is going to con continue to kind of move across areas of the western U.S. and pivot through Colorado and start to deepen. And we'll begin to start the beginning stages of a powerful blizzard that will affect the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, places like that where there is blizzard warnings in effect. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So I will mention tonight, I will may not have a video. I'm going to have a ton of kids in my house, family members stopping by, and we're going to be watching, we're going to be watching about five or six kids tonight. So uh, uh, I just don't know if it's going to be very possible tonight. I don't have the largest house in the world, so it's not like I have a uh, an area in the far furthest corner of the house where it's quiet to make a video. I will be very distracted just hanging out with family members and stuff, so I may not have one tonight. But Anyways, check this out. Storm Prediction Center for today, an enhanced region for a large area along a dry line that will be set up here. And listen, you know, there's going to be areas in Nebraska, maybe even Kansas, where the soundings are going to be uh, uh, fully loaded for sure. It's going to be a loaded gun sounding, meaning you pretty much don't necessarily have a maxed out, but very close. All dynamics will be close to maxed out, meaning you're going to have the thermodynamics, the kinematics there to really produce a supercell type environment where they do fire up. You're going to be dealing with what we call a cap, an area of stable um, air in the upper levels of the atmosphere that will prevent temporarily, at least throughout maybe the early to mid afternoon hours, supercell development. So therefore you're going to have all these, all these uh, basically ingredients for severe weather just kind of waiting to kind of pop through and kind of connect with one another on both sides of this uh, cap, if you will, this inversion. And once they do, the chances for significant supercell development with large hail and tornadoes is certainly going to be possible somewhere in this region. There's, therefore, you have this 5% risk, not necessarily because you don't have any ingredients there, but that capping issue and the fact that these are going to be so isolated in nature. Watch out, Lubbock, Amarillo, all the way up through a section of Kansas and Nebraska, and then you have another kind of isolated area right here, what we call a triple point, where the surface low will be pivoting out this region, and the kinematics will really max out here, uh, meaning those uh, winds aloft that really turn those updrafts. But you're going to have a hail threat here, especially down here, where these supercells do form lack of forcing, but I'm telling you, the dynamics will be there, thermodynamics will especially be there. Uh, surface heating, that uh, moist air will definitely be here. The cape levels will rise well above 1,500 to 2,500 joules per kilogram in these areas. That is a uh, definitely enough uh, storm fuel for these storms to really work with in all levels of the atmosphere really here. So large hail is going to be a concern. This hatched area, this uh, area in black outlined, that is a 10% risk inside this 30% and 15% risk to see larger hail of... Um, Certainly, uh, you know, two inch or diameter or larger for sure, but a 30% chance in this area, 25 miles, and e give any given point in this red area to see large hail. So, uh, definitely be weather aware today. But I'll talk talk about what's going on in the, in the country in general. Listen, if you're in areas out west, Colorado especially, do not burn anything today. You know, outside the Rocky Mountains, don't burn anything in general. Um, you know, there is an extreme risk for fire, you know, danger. You know, one spark can, you know, uh, set off a wildfire. So please do not burn anything out in this area. Red flag warnings are obviously up, but you, you know, have some uh, some rare outlooks in this area that are concerning for wildfires. You got a little bit of dense fog going on in the Ohio Valley, but you see these this red right here, that is blizzard warnings. We've been talking about this for the last several days that it was possible and is unfolding. Blizzard warnings now up. We'll talk about that a little bit tonight if we can make a video. But listen, if you're up in this area, you're going to be dealing with this again for the second week in a row. This is going to be an all weekend deal. It's really going to crank up tonight. But blizzard warnings in effect for tonight. So uh, we'll kind of briefly look at the tail end of this video of how this is going to unfold. But 
this morning, you're dealing with a little bit of rain, some storms in Iowa, uh, moving into areas of likely into Wisconsin as some rain might light to moderate rain, maybe even hit pockets of heavy rain in Wisconsin a little bit later. Moving into maybe even Chicago, you guys are going to be dealing with a little bit of storm action, uh, maybe just some heavy rain, but it could be a you know rumble of thunder, flash of lightning later this afternoon, evening, as, you know maybe for your evening commute, things like this, and then the showers will move in into areas of Michigan, the Great Lakes region that throughout the evening hours. And a little bit of rain up here for Minnesota. More rain and storms moves into Wisconsin, but nothing severe up here. But you see this area right here popping up here in Nebraska. That is the initiation of our supercells. We'll get a closer look at that here in a second. But you notice the deep south, mid-south, uh, northeast, you guys are quiet today. A nice day. Big time heating occurring today. Still, you're still locked into the cooler temperatures if you're in the northeast, 40s and 50s for highs. But I think you'll get close to 60 degrees in Boston today. Get well into the 60s in Long Island, New York City. Down there to Philadelphia, well into the 60s, maybe close to 70. Washington, D.C. will definitely hit 70 today. But Virginia, the Carolinas, all the way through Georgia, uh, the Deep South in general. 70s and 80s today. Beautiful, beautiful Friday. You couldn't ask for much better. There's a boundary up here near the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region. But if you're in most of Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, 70s and 80s for high temperatures. Missouri, beautiful day. 70s and 80s. Uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Listen, there's going to be big time heating in these areas. Very dry temperatures, especially, obviously, if you're west of the dry line. The west of the dry line is the dry air. East of the dry line is the moist air. Not always, but in general, that's the thinking here, right? So cooler temperatures are starting to set up here. But listen, you know, if you're in South Dakota, temperatures could rise all the way to 90 degrees in certain areas. Definitely, certainly the 80s are expected in certain areas of southern areas of South Dakota. But, you know, it's crazy. Certain areas that will be, it's, that might push 70 to 80 degrees a day are the same areas that will likely see some kind of winter weather in these areas uh, throughout the weekend. So it's very interesting to see. But let's go on and talk about this supercell development. So we'll start this off by about 6 p.m. Central Time out here. We're getting into uh, probably about 6, 7 p.m. Right, kind of right around the time when the storms kind of started kicking up yesterday in Kansas. I'm expecting the same kind of deal just north of Dodge City. Watch for some supercells to develop around Armorillo. Watch for some supercells development. But you notice the enhanced region is in this huge area right here. But you're wondering, well, you know, certain areas are going to see anything. Well, that's very true. If you're in an enhanced area, there's a chance where you will see nothing but just cumulus clouds building or either just clear skies. You might not see a drop of rain. A lot of these areas out here are almost begging for this to happen. They don't want the large hail of tornadoes, but you need to rain. You really do. Uh, but there is going to be isolated supercell development. And, and, you know, listen here, you know, the soundings here are consistent of a big time tornado and a large hail threat. So where do these do form? For example, if a storm chaser gets on one of these very photogenic storms last night, you know, nothing really produced a tornado. There was a tornado warrant storm, but you know, golf ball size hail was definitely there. And uh, you know, these storms can be dangerous as they kind of develop here and maybe, uh, I don't know, Northwest Kansas and kind of drift into the Kansas Nebraska line and the Southern sections of Nebraska where the soundings are really supportive for supercells, um, you got to watch out here. You know, these can be dangerous. You never know when these are going to hit your specific location, your farm, your small town. You just you just never know. So watch out here in this area of Kansas and Nebraska for sure. And then in this area of Texas, this is the two areas to really watch out for. But you notice the coverage in storms isn't very expansive at all. And then you kind of look up here and, you know, like I said, watch these storms in Nebraska because these will be producing some big time supercells. And then in South Dakota right here, there is going to be a tornado threat right where the triple point meets. And uh, you see this uh, low pressure developing right here, deepening very quickly. Winds will be ripping up here in South Dakota uh, throughout the evening hours and late overnight hours. But there is going to be a chance that one of these storms right here, if anybody plays the triple point, you might be in for a surprise for a quick supercell or something that could produce a tornado, that's for sure. So... And you need to keep this rolling here. And look, here comes the blizzard cranking up here in these areas of the country right here in western areas of the Dakotas. Um, but you look at the dynamics in play, you got a broad moist sector rising all the way up. I mean, there's even some going to be some 50 uh, degree dew point readings probably all the way into North Dakota. But this is a classic dry line setup for this evening. Um, you have uh, the dry air right here, and then you have the moist air reaching dew points in the 50s and 60s in this area right here. So uh, certainly the dynamics are there. 
And then you look at the 850 jet, the low level jet that really cranks up this afternoon in these areas. And it's really going to be cranking up uh, really as you're getting into this evening. I mean, look, it cranks up. Winds are going to be ripping even at the surface, but aloft it's going to be spinning. Any kind of updrafts that can break through that cap and get going here. So you're going to have a 40 to 50 knot low level jet ripping through this area. And then you look at the cape, the the juice that really gets these storms going. They really need to take advantage of this. So let's just look at surface based cape in, in general here. And you see it's cranking up. Let me get this going. Pivotal weather can be finicky. Uh, it's a great thing to look at when it comes to severe weather. But uh, look at these uh, surface based cape levels reaching, you know, 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram right along this triple point. You're going to have some storm juice to work with. So uh, loaded gun soundings in certain areas, especially in Nebraska, Kansas, even the Storm Prediction Center uh, kind of you know talks about that. So got to be careful. Got to be careful. You never know when your small town out here in the middle of the country. Is under the gun for um, you know large hail or a tornado. You guys, you who've lived out here for a long time, you know all about this. You know, I, I probably don't even have to tell you, but you know, you, you definitely need to know. It's going to be one of those days where you could have an isolated, powerful, might be beautiful to look at, um, but it could be dangerous if you get up under it. So, here we go. We look out west. Listen to the. Um, I don't know why I'm saying listen so much, you guys. Like I'm like I'm y'all's teacher or something. <laughs> but check this out. Low pressure developing along the Rockies and moving out of Colorado right here. Moisture on the back side of this. Cold air starting to wrap in. The snow really intensifies for areas of southern Montana, Yellowstone National Park of northwest Wyoming. And uh, really starts to crank up later this evening into overnight hours where any moisture as a deepening low pressure right here. Isobars really tighten up. Winds really increase. And then a blizzard begins in areas of eastern Montana and northwest, uh, northeast Wyoming, and then moves into the Dakotas later in the morning hours tomorrow morning. So that's pretty much all I got. You know, temperatures are going to be relatively cool for the western U.S. with big time heating coming up all the way into the North Dakota, where 90s could be reached all the way into South Dakota today. Um, you know, so it's going to be cooler than average, though, where troughing is being influenced by this low pressure right in this upper trough. So cooler, cooler than average temperatures expected in general, but nothing substantially cold or anything like that across the western states. Uh, but that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Appreciate y'all. And uh, I'll try to have y'all an update tonight, but I might not be able to fit it in. Just a lot of chaos with watching kids. But stay safe out there. Y'all have a great Friday, and I'll talk to y'all again shortly.